guys. Good morning. As promised, I am going to jump in and do Psalm 91 verse 2 today. So we looked at verse 1 yesterday, and that's as far as we got, which is good. That's all right. So um, we started yesterday talking a little bit about um, how much tension and anxiety a lot of us are feeling. I certainly am, and that... Um, Got a lot of responses just kind of acknowledging how hard that can make it to just sit and be quiet with God. I think even people, I mean, I know this is certainly true for me, even people who have really um, consistent regular times with God every day or every morning or whatever, the right now, at least for me, that's feeling like a really challenging time to just slow down enough to uh, do that. There's a lot of good... Um, resources out there that kind of talk about, you know, trauma and that this is kind of a maybe lowercase t trauma in some ways for some people time, but that we all kind of go into fight, flight, or freeze um, when we're in this space. And for me, my fight kind of is what comes out first. And I end up looking like do, 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 go, go, go. And I can't stop sometimes. So um, like with every, pretty much every problem I've ever had, <laughs> the way that seems to work best for me to combat the places where um, my way is just not working or I just can't do what I need is, of course, God, number one Christian answer, right? God, always the good answer, but it is always the right answer. Um, and so for me, there's a lot of good places and ways to do that, but the scripture is one of them. So I just started us with Psalm 91 because I know a lot of people are, I have several friends who are reading it a lot right now, and it's just a good one to start. I mean, it's a good one to start with any time. Good one. That's so silly. It makes me think about when I was in a senior in high school, my teacher would get so, good morning, good morning, um, annoyed when people would say in their, like, you know, thesis papers or whatever, this book was really good. She's like, yeah, it's really good. It's a classic that high schoolers are reading in English class. Please stop saying that it's good. We already know it's good. You know, John Steinbeck is not interested in your commentary on his book, High School Senior. Anyway, so I also should not seem silly to be like, the Bible is good, but it's good for me and it is good. Um, so Psalm 91, we did verse one yesterday and now we're going to do verse two. So, um, just like yesterday, I'm just going to kind of do, this is kind of off the cuff for this to work for me to do this every day. It's going to be very off the cuff. Oh, but Psalm, verse two, this is out of the, um, what is this out of the new living? Yes. Uh, I'll read 91 verse one is those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. So we talked about that one yesterday. I'm not going to retread that. You can go watch it. It's everywhere. Um, wherever you're finding this, it's there too from yesterday. So verse two says this, I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. Whew. That's a, that's a lot. Verse two in the Amplified says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. All right, so let's talk for a second about what, let's dig into this. So I love that the beginning of this verse is talking about this I declare about the Lord is what the New Living says, or the Amplified, I will say of the Lord. So um, there's a lot of different traditions that have a lot of different beliefs about this idea of declaring things. What I know for sure is without a shadow of a doubt is that when I speak things, they hold more weight for me. And, um, I think 90% of what happens sometimes when I speak the words out loud is that it's reminding my head and my heart and my body through my ears and everything else, uh, that this is truth. And so this place to start here. I declare about the Lord. Like, this is what I have to say about God. Uh, he is my refuge and my fortress. My refuge and my fortress. Or in the other translation, my refuge, my place of safety. So I know I'm not the only one who's feeling, hey, Alyssa, feeling uh, fear and a lot of lack of safety, right? I think we really struggle. I certainly do, but I think this is true as a culture and probably as a species <laughs> with the idea that uncertainty does not mean a lack of security. And I think about, um, I was talking about this with some friends yesterday and it just reminded me of this idea when I, um, when things are challenging or we've had like periods of financial struggle, my husband and I 
will just kind of say, how, he's really good about it. Say, I'll say, it's going to be okay. And he'll say, it's already okay. Or I'll say, we can, it'll get figured out. And he'll say, it's already figured out. And then one of the things that he's been so good to remind me about is he'll say, no matter what happens, you know, are you going to be there? Are the kids going to be there? You know, kind of going that worst case scenario route of like, if we lose the house, if we lose everything, if we live in someone's basement or whatever, you know, are we going to all be there? Yeah, I'm com I'm coming along too for the rest. And just remembering that uncertainty is real and it's good and healthy to engage with it. And then we have to like unclench our hands around it and let it go and move into the rest of our day. Hey, Sharla. Um, and we have to say, okay, this is real. These times are uncertain. These times are scary. And then we get to move out of that space. Give yourself time to feel it, to experience, be in it. Somebody said yesterday, 20 minutes, set a timer at the beginning of the day if you need it. Ball your eyes out, scream, cry, do whatever you need, yell at God, tell him how pissed off you are about it. It's That's fine. And But don't live there. Don't spend your whole day there. You can't do that. <laughs> you have to instead say, okay, then I'm moving into a new space now. And if this isn't a great way to do that, I don't know what is. This I declare about the Lord. 91, Psalm 91, verse 2. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge. He alone, only God. He gives us, he's so kind, really, to give us tons of places in the world around us where um, we get to feel safe and we get to experience a sense of safety. But at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, in every place, in every way, it's only in him that we find refuge. It's only in him, through him, because of him that we have a place of safety. He is that place. So if you are like me, wrestling with anxiety and fear and all the uncertainty that is so real for us all right now, then just remind yourself of this. You can just say that out loud. You, God, are my place of safety. You, God, you alone make me dwell in safety. That's Psalm 4, 8. That's my like nighttime anxiety psalm. Go look it up if you need one. That's one I give my kids too. And uh, we just get to remember this, I declare. This is what I say. And I, you can say it to other people, but say it first to yourself, right? You, God, alone are my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. So get that thing in you, you know, to be able to say this and the Amplified is so great. On him I lean, I rely, and in him I confidently trust. So that's exactly the picture. I mean, right? We lean on him <laughs> when we feel unsteady. Just lean. I mean, I love that picture of like leaning in. I can picture myself just sort of like putting my head and just like sort of snuggling in to the heart of God and that that is what he wants us to do. And I have to remind myself first sometimes that exact thing we were just talking about. He's my rock. He's my fortress. On him, I can lean and rely. That means he's trustworthy. When he says he's going to do a thing, he's going to do a thing. And um, we don't have to wait and wonder and see. It's true, guys. We live in a world where, um, you know, it's broken. And that has a real impact, as we all are very well aware, on our real lives. And God is good. It's that same peace that, like, the uncertainty of the world doesn't change our security when we find our hearts rooted in God. When we let ourselves be sitting and situated truly in the lap of Jesus. Whatever that looks like or feels like for you, that is a, that's a process, you know? That's not something that just happens one day and never shifts. I wish it was. <laughs> Although he seems to know what he's doing. He seems to be into this idea of the process. Look all around you. As we were talking about that with my kids yesterday, we were planting seeds for our garden. It was like, God is into the natural world. It's a great way to learn from him. God is into the process of starting one place and becoming something new. He made that up. Um, and he seems to really enjoy it, <laughs> even when I don't enjoy it sometimes. Um, so I just have to say, on him, I lean and rely. Rely. I love that idea of just relying on God, not just like asking if he could tap in, but like, nope, you're in this, you're on this. I'm trusting that you're there. And then, of course, you know, in both of these, we're looking at two different translations and in both of them I trust in him the amplified says I confidently trust and I think that idea of trust is a great one because it really isn't about a feeling it really isn't about an idea it's really about taking action I used to teach this um, class where we'd talk about faith and action and we would talk about um, you know I can say 
Like, I believe, I don't have any good examples, but like prepared <laughs> tools, visual aids, but I could say, I believe that if I tap my nose, I know we're not supposed to touch our faces right now, but it's okay. I haven't left the house in days and I'm all washed up. But um, I believe that if I tap my nose, like I will not die. So if I go like this and then like just kind of won't do it, you're probably going to kind of question whether or not I really believe that, whether or not I really trust in that truth. And so this verse here is talking about that kind of trust that we can confidently trust, like tap away, lean on God, trust in him, rely on him. Like it's not, he's not going anywhere. There is no place and way in which we can move way past, way past, because there actually is way more than that fleeting feeling of like, okay, God's okay. It's going to be okay. And the reality is if all you can muster within yourself, which is definitely where I am sometimes, is just telling myself, fake it till you make it. God is good. He, I trust him. You can just say this verse over and over and over again to yourself. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God on him. I lean and rely and in him, I confidently trust God. I ask that you just help our hearts to believe that today. You guys can just pray this with me. I will say of you, God, that you are my refuge. You are my fortress, my God. And on you, we rely, we lean. It's in you that we confidently trust. And God, we all know that there are a million places that we are falling short on that today. So Lord, I ask that you just help bridge that gap for us. Help pull us closer to you. Help us to mean it. Just like the um, father in Mark 9, I think is where that is. We believe, we believe, help us with our unbelief, Lord, because we all have that gap. Guys, I also just want to encourage you, if you're feeling that gap, God's not worried about it. He's not mad about it. He's not giving you a 40% attention because your average level of trust is 40%. That's not how it works, which is good. Very good for me, I know. Uh, it's just that he's here. He's here 100%. And he loves you 100%. So as you go into your day today, I ask you to just try to remember that. God, help us remember that. He, I really believe those kind of practical things. God will totally step in. Remind us, God. Whatever phrase maybe jumped out at us today. For me, I think it's just going to be, I can like rely and lean. I like that picture. My brain likes word pictures. Just leaning on God, Lord. Every time that anxiety starts to pull up, God, I ask that you help remind our hearts of that picture of leaning on you or whatever it is that jumps out. We just trust you, Lord. Um, we know you are with us and that the places where we are hurting and sad, because I know we're seeing more and more people who are being uh, truly impacted with illness and um, death and other things happening as a result of this virus in our own personal worlds. Obviously, it's been happening for a while all over the world, but in our own circles. Lord, as those things grow, help our hearts to know that you are sorrowful with us and that this is not your way and this is not your plan. Um, and God, help us to know what do we need to do. And if this is a place where we have um, to rest in trust, show us that. And if it's a place where you would have us do something different, show us that. Uh, one of my favorite encouragements is to be reminded that God leads better than we follow. So if you're not sure what he wants you to do or you don't even, you haven't even thought about whether he wants you to do anything, that's okay. Just ask him, show me what. And maybe what he wants you to do today is sit and watch a lot of Netflix and laugh by yourself or with a friend or not maybe on, you know, FaceTime or something, but, um, or your family or whatever, and just relax and enjoy his world. Yesterday it was sunny here in Kansas city. And it was like, glory, glory, hallelujah for me. <laughs> I was like, we are outside. And I just tried over and over again yesterday to stop and like, look at the outdoors and listen to the birds and just enjoy the sunshine that brings glory to God because he made us to revel in who he is and in his goodness. And this world around us is absolutely one of the best examples we have of his goodness that is physical and in our faces all the time. So don't miss it. Um, that's Psalm two, Psalm 91 verse two for today. I'm going to just keep going. So if this is speaking to you or, um, you know, anything, please go ahead and like my Facebook page or like, I have everything. It's ridiculous. I have a Facebook page. I have a YouTube channel, which is hilarious to me, but I do. So you can go subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can share this video. 
again, all the socials, it's all there. Um, but the more you do that, the more other people will get a chance to see it. And it's been really fun just in the last day to see the people who I've never heard of and never met, but who I'm so happy to see are being um, just encouraged through the word of God, because that's really all this is, is God uh, letting me get in on helping share what his very words are saying to us today. So love you guys. Be blessed. And uh, don't forget to pause and remember his goodness.